So we're going to have, have a look how we can stop him. Would you believe this man's going to become Messi? Yes, Would come on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there we go. Oh! Come on, you be messy. Right, that... let's get back. I don't think I can carry on this show. <laughs> so in that game, we played a right-footed left-back, Arbeloa, against Messi. Messi always wants to come inside on that left foot. The big thing was to try and show him onto his right foot. Now, easier said than done. Yes. And I think at times you've almost got to overcompensate where there's actually not that space to come inside. And you maybe accept him going on that right side. We did that, and at times maybe the centre-back came across there. Yep. And you just got to show him one side. But let's not forget how tough it is. We saw it against Napoli. Defenders showing that way you can still check back. But... Mike, you tell me, you got any other way of doing it? I, I, I think it's actually impossible to, to mark Messi. You've um, just seen me do it. I re <laughs> well, yeah, you did it, OK. As, as kids, we always get taught to, to be as low as you possibly can. Yeah. And you try show him one way, yeah. and then you'd move your body the next way. Isn't that what Boateng did? But, yeah, similar, and he fell, <laughs> he fell, on, the, he fell on the floor. <laughs> and because Messi, his change of direction is so quick, no matter which way you show him, he's always going to get past you. So the only way I would try and make Messi is just get as tight as you possibly can and get bodies round you. That's the only way for me. But you, you know what he's trying to do. He wants to, whatever he wants to do, he wants to do that. And then the goal opens up for him. I think if he goes that way, he's on his weaker foot and it's a tighter angle. But when he comes inside, as we saw against Napoli, as as Michael also mentioned, it is virtually impossible. That's why he is the best player in the world. So I see you there, Roberto, with the watchful eye of a coach watching on. Let's say it's Belgium against Argentina. You're managing, as you do, the Belgium national team. How do you set them up, then, to get the better of Argentina and, and Lionel Messi specifically? Well, I think, I think what the boys are, are saying is, is totally right. I don't think you can stop Messi on his day in a 1v1 situation. So just from a tactical point of view, you need to try to get a numerical advantage. So you create two and even three players. Probably one player gets really tied to him and the second one, a little bit the clip that Jamie uh, showed this, is almost reading the space that Messi's gonna go. He's, he's, got, he's got two touches where normal players get only one, so it's very difficult. But the other aspect that you can work on more is stopping the surface. That normally there is a line of pass that is more current than others, and it's better to stop the ball before it gets to Messi than when he gets into Messi's feet. So this is how you would go about it. Let's talk about how we expect Hansi Flick to go about it with Bayern Munich tonight. What do you see happening there? Well, what's fascinating today is we've seen Bayern how powerful, how strong they are going forward and scoring goals. Now, that comes at a price, if you want. The way that uh, Bayern the Munich they've been playing is almost a 4-2-4 system. It's a 4-2-3-1 three, three, system, but the wide players are so attacking-minded. We're going to see Perisic today and Navri on the other side. That puts a lot of pressure in the two centre midfielders. As soon as the ball goes into the wide area, they want to win the ball in these areas. It's not that they want to stop them, they want to win it. And here, you can see the fullback needs to be on song. Uh, boys, in that position as a right-back, how do you feel that you can Come out, I'd, and, I'd, and why I'd, would you not come out? I'd in that be position? too scared to go there just because of the, the ball in, in behind. I always backed my ability to, to have that one on one duel and want to win it. Sometimes when I went too, too, too soon, I felt like I was a little bit in, a, in no man's land and the ball across um, over the top of me was too dif difficult and, to. And that's where we create that almost synchronization between the fullback and the. If you can see it, uh, the clip evolving, the space is huge in the other side because the two midfielders, and it's going to happen to Thiago and Goretzka today, they have to come across. And the moment that you get into those sort of areas, Bayern are not in control. All, the only thing they can do is drop. And it's almost the opposition has got the say in the game. And that's very dangerous for Barcelona. Here you can see how Olympiacos score. Let's see exactly the same principle. Here's Navri. The right back comes across. Look at the two centre midfielders. That's going to be Thiago and it's going to be Goretzka. Exactly the two players are going to play today. Can they Once. cope with that in the midfield? I don't think they can. I don't think they can. I think you need to reduce those spaces today, but with the same players that they've been playing all season in a very different way. Here, this clip, Chelsea gets a shot on target just on the side of play. The real danger is when you go from one side to another. Look at Kimmich here, was playing midfield against the Spurs. The moment that the, the team shuffles across, look at the space that appears here. This Do you is think where... Messi, Fra That's... Frankie de Jong in these positions? In that side is Messi, in the other side will be Frankie de Jong. That's where Barcelona really can hurt you. Here you can see it's a good ball in between. The back four of, of Bayern will always be high. Look at this instance. Everyone is trying to get into that halfway line. They're not looking at the players, they're not looking at the threat of Chelsea, they're just trying to get 
real high line. And that's very dangerous. Look at how this space appears again at the side of that centre midfielder. And then in behind, you need to get by in the Munich, all defending, something that they are not used to it. Because in Bundesliga, they only play in two massive games against Borussia Dortmund. Don't have to do it. Look at Barcelona. They've got to be penetrating. Jordi Alba as a left back. They will use that space. Look at the space that they appears here. The two midfielders is impossible to do all these jobs. Do you think it'd be Jordi Alba it. making the penetrating runs more than Messi and Suarez, and they could be there for pullbacks? Do you think they've actually got the legs and the pace, and they actually want to run in behind Bayern Munich's defence now? Well, you would expect. Look at the space with Frankie de Jong that we were mentioning. They've got the legs. Frankie de Jong can get there. Arturo Vidal could get from a second line. Even Suarez. But I think it's from the back that you're going to get a real threat to be able to allow Jordi Alba get in behind. And then, in the other side, you've got Messi that is going to space. So it's a real difficult decision for a coach to try to stop being what you've been doing for a whole season just because you're facing Messi, but you have to do it. It is such a fascinating matchup, this one, isn't it? Barcelona against Bayern Munich. We're going to come back after a very short break, bring you uh, the teams coming out. We'll show you them warming up. We'll be back in just a second. Stick with us.